Gundam.tk presents Silhouette Gundam. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2 hours 2 bs Gundam Reviews. .net, and I've wrapped up my review of the Gundam RX F91, or the Silhouette Gundam, which you may know from games like G-Generations. Anyway, he's a very old school kit from 1992, so you can imagine that there's a whole bunch of problems with an old one like that, but also a surprising amount of positives, so without further ado, let's get on to the good and bad. No artificial help from things like sticky tack to hold the beam rifle in place for the negative parts of the review. Anyway, there are a lot of problems with this, and you can expect a lot of them from 1992, starting with the fact that you've got ugly seam lines. If you look down below, you may be able to see that the ankles are splitting apart because of the ankle armor. It's just got seam lines and all sorts of unseemly places, and those unseemly places happen to end up in front of your eyes, and you'll see them especially on the front of the feet, up and down, and you've got a whole bunch of seals that are supposed to, they're like papering over cracks where you're just covering things up with seals, and sometimes that's just going to draw even more attention to them which is unfortunate. Also, some of the seals are not plain going to fit. You've got a whole bunch of them here on these two sticker sheets, and some of them are supposed to go into places, like you have things on the waist section and down on the toes, and because of that, but the stickers are just too large, which means you're either gonna have to trim them down and then miscut, if you miscut or something, it's not gonna look great, or you just have to put them on and have a whole bunch of excess paper sticking out. Not gonna look good either way. And another thing with the seals is that a lot of them go on rounded parts, or they go over things that are supposed to have indents under them and things like that. So you can imagine that that's just that much less surface area for them to achieve a proper grip. Now in terms of the overall posability, you've got legs that are not gonna do much. You've got thrusters on the back that are gonna open up because they're poorly designed and they'll just flop open. The ankles aren't gonna move, the side skirts are gonna be slightly problematic, they just have old school grips holding onto them. The shoulders don't go on very well, the arms aren't gonna move all that much, and the waist don't expect any mobility, and the head cannot look down. And uh, also these thrusters here on the backpack, like the F91, where they can move all over the place and every position looks good. For this one, really none of them are gonna look that good, so it's a good thing that it's hidden in the back. You've also got things like the shield, the fact that it's gonna rotate and get knocked into the shoulder is going to be a bit problematic. So don't expect this guy to do much more than a couple poses and not even to pull those off all that well. So something else that needs to be addressed is just the amount of effort that you're gonna have to put into this guy to sort of make him look good. And I've gone over him with some inking and some black marker in a few places, but it's little things. And I'm talking here about the fact that you've got the eyes. We take it for granted today that we're going to get a sticker. No matter what kind of Gundam you buy, you're gonna be getting a sticker for the eyes and something for the camera lenses. It's just the standard equipment. But back in 1992, that apparently was not the rage of the time, so instead you're going to be getting something that is somewhat ingenious, a clear green eyes with a silver sticker that you stick on the inside behind it. So it's a good idea, except you are going to have to paint them up where he's going to end up looking like a Zaku bad guy with a long mono eye, which is just not going to look right at all. Something else that you'll notice with old kits is just the general lower quality of the plastic compared to the stuff that's used today. You're going to have a few things that are just, they've got these extra parts that are just, if you want to call them hanging chads or whatever, they hang off off the plastic. So you'll have to do some shaving to get that down. And in general, it's just got a little bit more luster and it just doesn't look as high quality as anything that you'd get today, that's for sure. When you're combining that with the fact that you've got these written on labels all over them, some people will really like them for the realism and you may like the version KA stickers that we get with everything. But this, with this one, you've got these parts here, you've got clear stickers and silver-backed stickers. Some of them fit on well, some of them really don't, and some of the ones that are just going around the round parts, like this one here on the chest that you can see. You've got the arrows, which I like, you've got the words, which are on the front, and overall it just sort of looks a little bit gaudy, and in most lights it's going to reflect poorly. So one of the final knocks being just the basics. When you're building with an old school manual, it's not gonna be as clear as what we've got today. It's gonna to have some terrible things. It's not even gonna tell you the proportions to mix the paints in. So anyway, if you wanna put this guy together, you're gonna to need a little bit of ingenuity when you're using this, just because you can make mistakes quite easily if you don't follow the directions very, very carefully. So anyway, just don't expect an ease of use kind of build that you're gonna get. Just sort of imagine that you're building Lego with a manual today compared to building some third party stuff, and you'll get an idea of what I mean with these old manuals in terms of ease of following. But the Vespas are out to talk about the positives, and actually for a 1992 kit, there's got to be a lot of them. Let's start with the A-plate, the fact that you've got multiple injections. I'm talking about three colors on some of these parts, and detailed ones at that, like with the chest to have these little tiny yellow Vulcans. Things that 20 years later we still haven't seen on some Master Grades. And every once in a while on other kits like that, 
it's here and it's great. Also, I have to give them real credit. I like a lot of the stickers. It sort of adds to the kitsch old feel of this guy. It, it is over relying, but then again, a lot of them are very well designed. I like these red ones down there and I like the words on there. I wasn't sure if I would or not. So, but anyway, I'm a big fan now that they're on. These pink parts here for the shield, it's gotta be the best part. The black seals are not gonna take it away. You hardly notice that it is a seal there on the shield whatsoever. The visual appeal is gonna get past any of the bad things. And overall, he's just got a very busy look to him. And that's in thanks in no small part to these gray seals here, all these colors all over the chest. And you combine that with the fact that he's got a very unique head build there. When you put the yellow parts in, he doesn't have a double V-fin like you'd expect with some of the newer ones like Strike Freedom. But by actually having these yellow parts that are separate, and then you've got the multicolor, the yellow and the white there for the V-fin, it's going to look great. And he's got great panel lining ability, all play channels and things like that all over the place. I think the head looks great thanks in no small part to those eight little tick marks that you can add in. The face mask is going to look great. And the thing that I cannot get over is that the F or the 91, I almost said F91, the 91 on his shoulder here, it's actually got these brilliant channels all around there. So you put some black ink in there and it's going to really make that number pop out. Put some black ink on this guy and I think that you're going to be actually pretty happy with him. Even up at a very close distance, he's still going to look pretty good. And especially for 1992, he's going to be great. So my final verdict is going to be, of course, colored by the fact that I read the manga and I enjoyed the manga and I like Tokyo Randall and seeing him in the silhouette Gundam in G-Generations and now brought to life in model form, looking a lot better than something I expected from the very early 90s, even though it's a year late for the number on his arm. I've got to say that this kit was a lot of fun to get put together. It's not overly expensive. I like the seals. Yes, there's a lot of problems. The Vespas aren't that poseable and the backpack's dull and the beam rifle doesn't work. But outside of that, he's a lot of fun and visually appealing and he's just going to take a little bit of effort because outside of the time that it takes you with some tweezers and q-tips to get those decals on right, all I did was splotch some black ink on there and I think that he actually came alive. So anyway everybody, he's a fun old kit, certainly a big step up on his contemporary or somewhat contemporary F90, which just comes across as being poorly sculpted, terrible head design and just too small overall. This guy can actually stand up with the best of them on your shelf today. Well, maybe not the best of them, but at least he can hold his head up with somewhat pride. It's ironic, I suppose, that the model can't really move his head all that much. But in the end, as always, that's just me. So what about you? Are the negatives too much for the positives? Are there too many things about him? Do you need that attachment to the manga to actually enjoy this guy? Or is he a fun build? I enjoyed putting him together just because it's always cool to go back to these old school kits from 1992. He was more fun to put together than the Burgagiros, and he's a big step up on the F90. But why don't you let me know what you think with a comment down below. Always love to hear from you. Let me know what you think of the videos and the reviews and everything else in between. Anyway, everybody, Robert184, Gundam.tk. Thanks for watching. There'll be lots more new stuff, old stuff, and everything in between. Going back, I suppose, all the way to 1979. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. Considering that this guy's sort of plagiarized from the F91, I wonder if any third parties are going to plagiarize Bandai and turn the MG F91 into a version of this sometime. You know, and believe it or not, if you go in and read those little tiny decals that are all over the place with all the words, the English is sometimes better than what you see on the sides of some boxes nowadays.